What's up everybody? For those who know me on Instagram, know me as John Doe, Job Shop Machining, here I am. First and foremost, I want to give a huge shout out to Practical Machinists for affording me this opportunity. I think it's really cool, you know, a chance to show my father's shop and what I like to call a sun and pot machine shop. I'd say I was raised in this shop. You know, my first job was crushing tin cans on the old lynch press back there. Now, my dad, of course, wouldn't say that was a real job, but to me as a kid, it was. Our main work nowadays, to summarize, is marine chemical and oil companies. We do anything from one-off parts to specialty tools. Rebuilding crane blocks to turning out tugboat rudders. It's your shop that can do it all. If it can be measured, it can be made. But with that being said, we are the last remaining machine shop just north of the Corpus Christi port. Within its respective radius, of course. We're a 100% manual shop, no CNC's here, and it's not because we can't find a use for them, it's more or less we can't find an interest for them. I'm a huge fan of manual machining. Through the years, even as I served in the Air Force as a machinist, I had the opportunity to learn CNC's and a chance to, you know, really figure them out, and it just didn't pick my interest. When they say we're a dying breed, you know it's true but I'm proud to be a part of it and thankful for the life I woke up in. I could have woke up anywhere in the world, but God put me here next to my father and I couldn't see it any other way. Now before I show y'all the shop, here's a heads up. This shop is dirty, but this shop is busy. We fight heat and humidity down here in little downtime to each their own. So let's get started. Behind me is where it all started in 1985 with nothing but a 10 inch atlas lathe and a horizontal bandsaw with a cracker box welder. And from there my father built. Now let's step outside and start this walk through. I hope you enjoy. Now walking up to this front door, the first thing we see is a two ton load star. And believe it or not, she still works. Parked below that is a 1953 tow motor and well, I guess I can say it again. Believe it or not, she still works. Off to the left of that is a material rack where we keep small bar stock mainly and a flat bar. Half ton load stars sitting above it. Now I'll walk us over to the right over here. We keep a survivable amount of aluminum. It doesn't pass through the shop often. And besides, we prefer steel. To the left of that, we have a fair amount of aluminum, bronze, and brass. Mainly is built around catering to one, the one-off bushings. Each drop up here starts off in a three-foot stick. I'll step over. This is my break room. The old man's is right there. This is where I like to come and unwind, take a load off, you know. In this Kennedy right here, we keep a lot of one-off instruments. Our important ones stay in the office where the AC's at. Blue cabinets hold just carbides and hole cutting tools. Down here is where we keep our stainless. Organization or not, just being my father and I, you can find it just as quick if you know where it's at. We use a leave them where they lay organization method here. Now to spin us around, the first machines walking through are threading machines, Oster and a rigid. Uh, the Oster can go up to three inches and the rigid can't, sitting in a, under another half ton load star. Got a little wire wheel, don't get much love, but it is what it is. These pins right here are actually a job fixing to go out. That's for the Harbor Bridge project. The city's finally getting a new bridge. Now I'm expecting to get some grief for this, but right here we have a dirty old bridge port with an Acer head on it. But take it as you may, this is a reason why we are the last surviving shop, you know. We cater to the work. It's set up for one repeat job that's been repeating for over 15 years now. And that is slotting out copper bus bars, soaked and never sees. End of the day, it's about making money and to survive, you gotta be quick. Off to the right of it is our everyday Acer mill. You know, you just can't beat the weight of them. Up top, got a current powered drawbar, powered table and knee. 
Now this, we only keep our most common tooling out. A lot of the other ones just go up in the cabinet. You know, and there's some hole saws up there. Top indicators are in a safe place. Small workbench, a lot of scattered end mills with burn up tips, but I'll always go through that whenever I got some nasty steel to chew through and I don't feel like using up a good one. We only use the high speed steel here. Our carbide is set aside for broken taps. Super spacer, large curt vise, rotary tables tucked under in there, but I just yank them out with another half ton load star. Now walking across, we have the very first lathe I ever learned to run. Nardini with an 80 inch bed. We like to call it our tool room lathe. It's got a three jaw on right now. A hot job came through today. And that, it ain't actually seen that chuck in a long time. To the left of it, we have a workbench. One thing you'll see on all our workbenches, mainly our, well, just our lathes actually, is angle iron tool holders. That comes in super handy. Turn us back around. We have a plain Jane pedestal grinder. Mainly used for braised carbide and tungsten electrodes. We don't resharpen drill bits here. Followed by a small engine lift. Even with a shop full of load stars, it still comes in handy. Oh, here's that old lynch I was telling you about. Now behind us is what I like to call our weld section of the shop. Sitting under a one ton load star. Here we actually got a job I'm working right now. This bucket's off to the dredgers in the port. Just finished cutting out the weld in bushings, getting ready to replace those. It's gonna need new pins. But enough about that. The first tool machine walking up to is just a drill press and all it ever sees is a chamfering tool. Anybody out there, go get you a drill press and just dedicate it with a chamfering tool. You can thank me later. Down here, Millermatic 250. It's the only machine my dad likes to use. Nothing better than pulling a trigger and going. Hot box above it, where we keep our rods and grinding wheels with the little shelf down over here. Now this wrench rack I made is a good example that I'm slowly working into being more organized. You see, I left for four years in the military and my father worked here alone. You can't just walk into a man's shop and decide you're gonna organize it and make changes. It's a process, slowly but surely. You see, you used to not even be able to sweep under that table. It takes time. And I don't expect my old man to clean. You work your way up from things like that. So hopefully eventually I'll have a kid wanting to replace me. Next machine to it was actually a bonus for me last year. Miller Dynasty 280, water-cooled. I definitely didn't get good at welding in the military, but I did get very familiarized with it. Enough for when I got back actually to stop, slow down, and learn as I go. You have to get good quick when it's on a customer's part, that's for sure. Besides that is a 100 amp Victor plasma cutter. Finally had a chance to test the breaker on the other day, blown into some two inch steel. Kept popping the 50 amp, so we threw a 90 in there. We needed a 100, but we couldn't find it, but it got us through the job. Here we got an oxy cart with stationary oxy behind it. And then we run that over to the spool and keep nothing but a rosebud on it. And having the, the stationary gives us that extra oxygen bottle because those familiar with an oxy lance super cut system, it'll eat through a bottle. Over here, enclosed sandblaster. Doesn't see much work, but like most things, it's good to have when you need it. To the right of it, we got a 40 ton uh, Scotchman. Nine times out of 10, it seems like whenever I get a job for this machine, I can usually finish it out on this. Also super handy for making up quick weld jigs. Tied in with another small workbench turning us around. So this was the second expansion of the shop from that garage right there. And now onto the third and most current expansion, but hopefully not the last section of the shop. 
The side me is mainly where we keep all our cut knolls. Huge fan of Molly D. I think we have one of the last few bottles of that Ashburn Company stuff before they outlawed it. We actually switched to Zep 45 to keep the way slick and the rust down. You can just spray that machine up and down. You know, we, we make a mess here quick, honestly. Here we keep a couple of boot jacks, power team. I think we got a 20 ton and a 50. Now our first hydraulic press is a homemade press, 55 ton. Raising this table is fairly easy because we can just drop our bridge crane down through its throat and pick it up. Going down over here, we got another press, which is another homemade press, pushing 10 tons with a 12 inch stroke. We use this mainly for uh, driving brooches onto another workbench. Got a Wilton vise over there. This area is just really mainly quick tinkering, you know, in and out. Now right here is where we keep our little remote to our wireless hoist. So I'll go ahead and show you all the bridge crane. The hoist on the left has a power trolley with a brake, three ton, and the one on the right just being another hook to drop. This comes in handy when you got a heavy crane block that weighs two tons and you're trying to flip it. Small parts cleaner over there. Now here is our first machine on the floor, a Summit Horizontal Mill. We actually had outgrown this machine once we got the Cincinnati floor mill, but ever since diving into the instant machinist community, I've really been wanting to learn the ins and outs to gear cutting. So as it sits right now, this is a machine. It's still ready to work, but for now, it's just a project. So far, I've got me a Cincinnati Millicron though, located a tailstock, but I'm hoping one day I can find me a helix attachment for it. Someday. But then the other side of me just wants to set it up, rough out parts, which would be more practical for us. It's just, ah, it's a little underpowered. Got some pins right here. These are going to that, esc that bucket rebuild. Wishbone, about to cram some bushings in it. Those are all gonna get turned out here pretty soon. Now let's check out the legend we should all recognize, the Marvel Series 8. Man, so it cuts up to 24 inch and the head will drop to a 45. You see that pad eye I welded to the counterweight up there? I can hook on to another half ton load star. Helps me get, you know, it seems the older that machine gets, the heavier that head is. Just recently redid and cleared up all the old coolant lines. It's really woke that saw up. To the left of it you see a lot of more drops and you can hook up that load star to swing them over and right over to the saw making things easy this is another recent project i did build in this shelf to help store all these drops one point they were all over but like i said earlier it's a process to the right of we, the saw we have my most recent purchase my knight and shining armor and this was actually a father's day gift to help keep our cooling up to par because we were having to waste it like crazy and cleaning sumps takes time and time is money and like we all know there ain't enough of it moving down to our old wilton radial drill that just finished this job six 16 inch and a half plates with four holes each drilled and tapped came out to 96 inches total of tapped holes Heck, we got a brand new Jacobs chuck over there. It's looking a little too shiny. Gonna have to have that doled out in no time. Keep a bunch of, uh, mainly just pipe drills. I mean, pipe taps up there. I should have showed that. That's the only thing we'll really store over there. Everything else stays in our own Kennedy's. Wilton's got a six foot arm on it. Uh, I can drive a two and three quarter spade, no problem on it. This workbench 
Got an indexing table for punching out flanges or whatever might be called for its use. Now wrapping around this corner, our old Miller stick burner. Didn't want to get rid of it when we got the Dynasty and actually serves a better purpose out here when things back up into the shop and just can, I can lead right up to it versus dragging them out from that weld section. I think there's even, I don't know if y'all can see it. That's just a nut I welded and then pressed an LDA in there. Beside it, we have a Wilton column drill that can punch uh, three and a half spades, no problem. Mainly use that for just punching out pad eyes for the guys pick that pick up the heavy stuff. Now our oldest machine right next to it, our Bullard VTO, 36 inch swing, outf outfitted with a glass bar readout, still reading true. The best things about this is definitely starting it up because the oiler still works on it. You know, you see a faint old smoke just coming out from its machine mating surfaces. When my dad says when he's ready to slow down, this will be one of uh, the two machines he will still run. The other one is behind me. Our Cincinnati floor mill. It's got a VFD on it, new wall readout. There's some shop made V blocks right there. And some angles. This is by far my dad's favorite machine to run. But can you really blame him? Oh my, <laughs> a little quote, never waste a good purling. You'll notice through our shop, all our purlings are stacked with stuff. I mean, if you're looking for something you can't find, did you check the purling? Now here we got a mighty turn. Hopefully one day this lathe is gonna get replaced with a six inch spindle bore, 80 inch table as well, but it's got rapid travel and a reduction tailstock. We don't use it really, unless I get some dirt nasty torch cuts. And anyway, I just don't wanna, you know, cram it on the good lathe. So I'll just come over here and jam out. And, and then we just spray it down with Zep 45 when we're done and walk off. Got another summit lathe here, 120 bed, 22 inch swing. I believe it's very rare. This machine will go a day without running. It's our go-to lathe outfitted with a new wall readout. And of course, got to have that rapid travel and a reduction tail stock for punching spades. You know, we don't use twist drills here, spade or nothing. And then of course it's not complete without another job shop workbench. From the tool holders to the boring bars. There's some more tooling in that cabinet over there. Another good example of uh, never wasting a good purling. Bunch of old jigs here. And yes, some of them still do get pulled off the shelf and get used like there's a, I see that one with four bolts in its face rusting over. Used that one a week ago, and that had actually been sitting up there for quite a time. But it also comes in handy, because if you're not wanting to make a jig, you can sometimes find one close and just modify it. I'll turn this around and walk onto the last lathe we got. It's another Summit, 30 inch swing, 120 bed. No readout on this, but it's got rapid travel and a spindle break, so it is what it is. This machine sees more boring than turning, you know, especially boring out weld coupons is gravy for us. Actually a small story, you can't see it anymore, but this machine used to have for, I think it lasted about two years, but it was just a trail of blood. I cut my hand off my night of high school graduation on this machine trying to rush out a job, but learn quick, you know, and I learned before I got off my old man's health insurance because I was still a kid, so it is what it is. But you only get cut one good time. And you know, as kids, we think we're invincible until someone levels the playing field. And complete without a workbench. Backing up a ways, you can see where we uh, 
It's where we store our steady rest and follower for that on the back side. Got some bar stock storage. This this actually needs a lot of work. Got some more over there. They've got a strap to them, so it may look like a pain, but it ain't nothing to yank it out with the hoist. Now tucked away in this corner is honestly a machine that just comes in clutch to have a 16 inch war production handy shaper, universal table. It ain't nothing to punch a keyway out quick on this, especially if you're pushing over an inch. I'd be damned if I try to cram that brooch. I only use it once or twice, but I mean, when the job comes for it, I'll emphasize it's, it's very nice to have. Close beside it is our last machine, Miller Bobcat 225. We've been slowly picking up on some field jobs. Actually had a guy hauling a wind turbine out West Texas, got hit and seized his trailer up because someone rear-ended him. And I uh, came and yanked on it, welded it out. That was actually a really cool job to do because you just never know who you're gonna pick that phone up to. Just trying to be a shop that can do anything is the goal really. Last little part of the shop is this little area right here. Put that shelf up last year because there's never enough room and I'm slowly, like I said, getting everything organized. Got our oxy lance up there, you know. Old coffee maker from the 70s. I'll still run that thing too, but not during the summer. It's too hot. I like to stick to the cold brew. Got my first Kennedy right there. I mainly just keep indicators and all my camera stuff on top. Old brake, that's that sheet metal work, so we don't do that no more. But some pipe up here, a little stock, and then that's where we keep all our bench stock up there of nuts and bolts and stuff. A couple old Bridgeport heads. There's our old CM hoist that came ton when we had finally outgrew it and started getting into crane blocks. But that pretty much sums up the shop. I hope y'all enjoyed. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope y'all enjoyed. I know I enjoyed showcasing my father's shop, our son and father's machine shop. Got a busy week ahead of us. Jobs are starting to line up. The rain's starting to pick up out here, so it's fixing to get hot once we close that back door. Practical machinists, thanks again, really, for affording me this opportunity, you know. I really enjoyed doing it. I hope y'all have a busy and good week. If you've got any comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the comments. I'll browse through them, answer what I can. But other than that, y'all have a good one.